Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. I can't see anybody, so Carrie, can you do? Second, I'm, I'm seconding, Tina. Okay. Um, should we first approve the minutes from the April meeting? Did everybody get a chance to read them? Did anybody have any changes or corrections? They were short. <laughs> they looked good to me. I don't know if I if ever read them. <clears throat> so then can I have a motion to approve, sorry, hold on a sec. Can I have a motion to approve the April meeting minutes? I'll make the motion to approve the April meeting Tim? minutes. Tim? Second? Yeah. Anyone? Um, I second. Brittany. Brittany. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, yeah. I think that's yeah. good. Yeah, we're good. Hi. Um, Jerry, welcome. Do you want to start? Yeah, hold on. I'm just breaking another pistachio. So, <laughs> no Jerry, I'm going to sign off. Yeah, please get lost for a minute. Thank you, Jason. So um, thanks for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Jason. Um, for several years now, he's been working just as a recreation supervisor. Um, we couldn't even elevate him to a recreation. We couldn't elevate him to a recreation superintendent, which is really predominantly what he, what he does um, until um, we started looking into the position, and in fact, um, we will have the opportunity, and to the board's credit, when I presented it in a somewhat vague way, but they knew what I was talking about, that um, um, we have an opportunity now to promote Jason uh, as recreation superintendent. Jason is a um, late bloomer when it comes to the recreation world because he was not in the position to have enough experience to take the recreation superintendent test. And so that limited our ability uh, to move him up. But um, on June 28th, I will have the opportunity to move him to recreation superintendent, which is really the title that he's been using and the title that the county wants us to use. And of course, for a couple of years, we've been, you know, kind of, uh, ducking and weaving when the county asks for our recreation status, our recreation leadership status. So what I wanted to do was um, just talk to the board and see if there was anything that I could communicate when I do actually take formal action of what maybe they're looking for um, in addition to or supplemental of what Jason already does. Um, because he's going to He's going to have a higher title. He's going to make more money. But usually, and Jeff will confirm this, usually when that happens uh, with me, I give people more responsibility. So is there anything else that the board would be interested to see at the recreation level? And then I'll go into a couple of um, other things that are somewhat embargoed, but I can vaguely mention them as well. So Tina, if you wanted to just see what the board um, impressions are of Jason, uh, anything that we're doing that we should be doing or, or we should, that we're not doing that we should be doing, those kinds of things. That's really the discussion. Yeah, um, I'll start if that's okay. I, um, I was on this commission before Jason was in charge and things are a thousand times better from the perspective of the board, as far as us getting information and having input where before we had nothing. So I think that in itself <clears throat> is fantastic. Um, I think he does a great job. He has great ideas. The only things that have come up lately, which I don't think are his fault and I think he's working on them, was um, some programming for younger kids that we've spoken about in the last few meetings. Uh -huh. and um, to revamp the website for 
looking at programs and registering for programs. Um, okay. As people were comparing it to the town, um, Jason knows about it. He said it's a lot of work. So he, but I, so I think like little things like that will make him even look better too. Okay. Um, but well, I what should I look at? Should I look at the town and see how they have it I set think, up? Yeah, maybe. I, I haven't looked at any other other than the town. Um, okay. But it's definitely easier to navigate and like read the flyers and things like that. Okay. Um, Sure. Just, I want to chime in on the website stuff. That's what I do for a living. So um, I'm a web designer. So if if I can help like advise um, and I specialize in making things user friendly. So um, I think that's probably where things have been falling short is that it's like hard to navigate and stuff like that. I, from my experience, and I don't have a lot looking at other town or local websites um, around this, but um, I think there's like a bunch of different programs are just throwing in a flyer and it gets put in one document. So um, it might be helpful to have like a template that every program can use to drop in a photo and some text and stuff like that. So whatever I can do to help, I'm like happy to chime in and, and um, offer any support on that end. And I just want to say Jason has been incredible. So I've been super blown away with all the work that we've done. So sorry to jump in, Tina. No, <laughs> okay. Go ahead. No, I, I can also jump in and I'm in agreement with, I think Jason's doing a fantastic job. Um, he's easy to work with. Um, he, he, he listens, he hears, he, he gets things done. Um, it's just been wonderful. And as far as the brochure goes, it was, it was something, Jerry, that came up um, because the town of Mamaronic, not only do they have their brochure on their website, but they also have the physical brochure. And because because I'm a pack rat, um, oh. I'm gonna hold this up. The village used to do this. And if you can look at the date. You have yeah, I see it, 13, 14. Yeah, so this was the uh, fall winter brochure. Um, okay. We don't necessarily need a paper one, but right. this is what the town does. They do send a paper one out, but then the identical version of the paper one is on their website. And it's just really helpful when people want to see all the things that the village has to offer and the programs they offer throughout the seasons. And if we could have that on our website, as opposed to just things get, that get thrown up there when the program is happening, um, I just think it would be so much better for, for the village, um, for people to be able to kind of anticipate where they might sign up for these programs, because if they don't know it's coming or it's something the village offers, they might go somewhere else. Um, so it just, I think would be a good addition and yes, we know it's a lot of work. Jason already said it's a lot of work, but I imagine if this was done at some point, somebody's got yeah. this somewhere, mm -hmm. um, where it could be revamped, but this could be the base. So, so would it be, would it be, um, so the way I read magazines is I read them online now and mm -hmm. it's like a format. You just hit the, hit the edge of the, of the screen, right. Or, or my iPad and it flips yep. to the page. Right. If it's something like that, where we can set up something like that and take our flyers, which already exist, which really are repeated over and over again every year, maybe we tweak them a little bit. We obviously change the dates. But if something like that was prepared in January or February before the actual season, quote unquote, starts, would that be something helpful, you think? Instead yeah, it could be like that. Okay. It could, yeah, no, I, I'm not saying to do the paper one at all, because yeah. I know that that can get expensive. It can all be yeah. online, but it doesn't even have to be like where you flip the page. It could just be something that you scroll through, like Ren Nature okay. Center has one too. If you go on Ren Nature Center's site, there they put their brochure out and you literally just scroll right through top to bottom makes it really easy. And but all the information is there. And then people okay. can just see what the programs the village has to offer online Good. instead of waiting for them to come out every time and, and then, you know, not know. And are commissioners in agreement with um, doing an annual kind of like um, beginning of the year and announcing everything, you know, early or late winter, let's put it late winter before the season starts. Is that, cause we kind of- I think you have different yeah. I think you have a biannual one. Why wouldn't you do, I think you want in the beginning year for the winter, the and then, but then you do one before the summer. Cause I feel like that's the only time we really have programming. A lot okay, of so this is this is fall winter, and then yeah. there was a spring right. summer one, which I don't exactly. have handy. Okay. Yeah, I think okay, that's very good. And this would, could be something that 
I don't know what the like requirements are for security, but I could see this just being like a Squarespace site that like you just drop in images and text and it's really easy to update. Um, yeah. So I think that, and then if it's living live, you could update it as needed and just like drop in the new pictures, drop in the new flyer, whatever it is, and then have a really easy link to sign up for everything so that it's not just information, but people can actually take action and sign up for the programs. Okay. Okay. So can I chime in going back to Jason? Yeah. Um, so I've been on the rec committee for many years, probably two previous uh, superintendents or supervisors. And Jason is number one, in my mm -hmm. um, opinion. He's the cream of the crop. He's really helpful, knowledgeable, positive. It's always, let's look into it. It's, a, uh, it's not very like negative. Maybe there's a possibility we can enhance the programs that we have, other programs that uh, potentially can uh, evolve for the village of Marinic. He's just been, he's been great. He's been great in my point of view. Yeah, I'll say that again. I So I first started getting involved in the Parks and Rec Committee um, in May of 2020 um, and expressed interest in like helping to revamp Columbus Park. So we did the, um, the swings um, installation and just Jason reached out to me to, um, to see if I was interested in being more involved. And he's just has so such great energy. He's excited to get things done. He's concerned about including everybody in the community at all demographics and all parts of um, the town and the village. And I think it's just really, it, he just is such a positive force um, in the community. And I am really excited. I was nervous when you said we have to talk about Jason. I'm glad that it's all positive things. So yeah. super excited to hear that. It's well-deserved. Um, yeah. And I've reached out to him with random questions and he's pointed me in the right direction. Um, if it wasn't involved in the parks department. So very resourceful. Um, yeah, I would say if he needs more support to help him do his job, that that's my recommendation. <laughs> sure. Anyone else before, let me see here. I just, I'm looking at my phone. I just don't want to lose any, I don't want to drop off the call, the Zoom. Okay. So, I did get some information about the website. I completely agree. Earlier this year, and I was looking for that email to send to everyone, but earlier this year, I gave Robert, who's our public information officer, and Jason a task to create a list or like an announcement of, um, you know, we're back type of thing. We're back from the pandemic or we're back from COVID. And these programs are going because um, um, we really tried to return as many effective and I want to use that word effective programs uh, that we had in years past before we got hit with COVID. Um, I'll bring them back this year uh, to make, um, you know, just to, just to make people feel like, um, you know, we're getting out of it and we're, we're moving on. Um, even though we may not be, um, we have to, you know, at least try. Uh, the other thing was that the, um, um, we, uh, we want suggestions. So Tina, if you wanted to consider, it would be great to have a few people like a subcommittee of the Parks and Rec Commission for um, the sole purpose of looking at the potential of uh, improving our web presence as well as our um, um, pushing out information, pushing out our programs okay. as best we can. That would be pretty good because I think that if... Um, I don't think Jason shies away from work. If you know, if you see Jason in other capacities, uh, like when we had our flood and other things, Jason does not shy away from work, but wants to, he only wants to do a good job or else he doesn't want to do it at all. So I think having the support of um, a couple of um, rec commissioners uh, um, working with him, at least as, a, as an email chain, you know, of course, a, a small number so that so that we're not violating any open meetings law or anything like that i think that could be a a, a positive where you would have potentially an update of what we're doing not only what we're doing but how we're changing and improving from what we used to do okay so all right 
Um, and then um, in short, in a short time, probably within the next three weeks, you will learn that we have um, received some major awards um, and designations. I can't really say too much because they made me embargo the information and I can't, it's in, you know, I can't dis disclose it, but um, the hard work is the best way I can put it, the hard work and the perseverance and the creativity um, that we've been, um, that we've been trying to implement while we've been forced to be creative during a, a, a difficult time has really paid off. So we'll have at least the, the, the commission and the, the village and the board of trustees will have some, uh, some things to celebrate because um, countywide we've done extremely well in this state's designation. So, but we'll have that probably, actually I think you'll know about it at the next meeting or maybe just before, uh, but you'll know about it. What'd they say, Jeff, sometime in June? Yeah. Right. So things are working out. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're seeing is actually being recognized by other entities. So it is, um, it is a wonderful thing. There are a couple of things. I'm going to text Jason now to come back. And I thank you for, you know, for the information that you provided. There are a couple of things that we should probably talk about. And what I'll do is I'll stay in on the meeting, continue to eat my pistachios, and then just chime in when, um, you know, when I have um, an opportunity to chime in. So let me, let me text Jason to come back. To hear that there's always good news on the way. <laughs> yeah. Let me get him. Oh. Go ahead. You can keep going. I don't think I'll lose you. That was it for me on that subject, Tina. Oh, okay. Well, should we wait for Jason there? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Let me get him. Hold on. Be back in a minute. Very great t-shirt. I got I got this t-shirt this weekend. Look, it says Tom and Jerry. And love it. You know why? You know why I wear it, right? Because who's the smart one? Jerry's the smart one. That's why I wear it. The mayor hates this shirt. I sent him a picture of it as soon as I got it. I love it. <laughs> I think Jason. Who the that smart one is. Is he back? Jay, you back? Tom, Tom got the top billing, though. <laughs> That's right, he does. Yeah, I guess he does. <laughs> Jason, are you on? I'm back. Okay. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we'll go to Jefferson Avenue Park Playground. Yeah, let me just share my screen. Is the is the picture big? Too big? Too small? Is it good? No, no, that you went small. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yep. All right, Jeff. <laughs> let me know when you want me to scroll. All right. All right. So uh, I know we've been talking about this last couple meetings. Uh, we decided to make some changes. Um, one of the biggest changes is Jason. If you could scroll down to the new little kids playground. That's good. We're going to add a shade structure to the little kids playground because unfortunately we're going to have to uh, request to take three trees out of the park and place them elsewhere in the park for access for the ADA ramps and access to spin the swing set. Um, we've added a couple more garbage cans and a couple more benches. So that's what's going up to vote tonight. We also got uh, received some quotes back for uh, the pricing for the park. So we just want to run through that with you guys. This way we're all on the same page. So this, this quote is going to be for the equipment itself. Uh, Jason, if you want to go down to the last page. Uh, yep, the grand total for the equipment is going to be 
$868.88. That's to make the playground fully ADA compliant. Rubber surface, shade structures, benches, garbage cans, picnic benches. And Do you mind next... going back to what the, there was a view, I think when you were talking about the shade, um, just had a question slides, about. The three slides, yeah. Um, I think up one more. I don't know, it, you could see, yeah, this one. The, um, the benches that you see, it looks like there's like two in a row that aren't facing each other. Is that designed yeah. on purpose? So this this isn't a um, this isn't our design. Okay. Uh, the company just took the shade structure and put it in a park like view. Okay. So I I could show you guys. <laughs> um, this also isn't where the rest of the benches are going either. Okay. It's just when you when you put the it's called a CAD CAD file. Yep. When you put the CAD file over the image, it kind of moves everything around to fit everything in the image that you're trying to use. That's the gotcha. way you would, he okay. explained it to me. So these aren't the placements of the benches. It's just kind of where the where the program decided to stick the benches so it fits in the view. Okay, cool. Just yeah. double checking. I was like, that's an interesting design. No. <laughs> but, okay, cool. <laughs> the shade is an awesome idea. Yeah. So Jeff, that 197 is everything, no additional cost on top of that for anything you have to do? Well, the 197 is just for the equipment itself. The equipment, the installation, and the port and surface. Okay. So there's still the cost for when you redo the walkways and the fencing? Yeah. And is there anything other than that? So as of right now, we're covering brand new playground equipment, yep. all, new, all new blacktop, all new curbing, new basketball court, um, and all new perimeter fencing for the, for the park. Do, do you have to redo the basketball court again? Yeah, because the basketball court, last time we redid it, it was just patching and painting. Oh, okay. So, so my feeling on it is I'm, rip, I'm ripping up the whole park and the court has cracks in it already that we just patched. So why not just do everything new? This way, everything is copacetic and brand spanking new. We don't have to worry about coming back in a few years and repairing the cracks that are just getting bigger. And also when the painting company comes and repaints the court to repair the cracks is a substantial amount of money more and more time that the court actually has to be down. So I figure since we're doing all the walkways and the curbing over it anyway, we would redo the court with it. This way, everything's brand new in the park. But we're keeping the basketball hoop because that's like super brand new. We're yes, just yes. saving that because that's kind of expensive. So we're keeping that because that's good still. The hoop staying, the court's being redone. It's the black top basically, this plain surface. Yeah. The, um, so going back to uh, Miracle, have they been around forever? Or is it um, the manufacturer slash installer? Have they been around for a while, Jeff? So Miracle has been around for a while. We actually did the Columbus Park Swings through Miracle. Okay. Um, they've been around as far as I can remember. Um, they've actually have bought more companies to take over. Okay. So they're, they're a pretty big, substantial company in the recreation world. And is this the low bid as we normally do? Or is, this is This is on state bid. Miracles okay. on state bid. So okay. we get the percentages off and we get the savings Got with it. them right off the bat. Okay. Hey, Jeff, and what's the, uh, the life expectancy of the hardware, the play area, workmanship, uh, and all that? Is that in the warranty? So on the, on the rubber playground surface, there's a seven year warranty, which is the same all across the board, no matter what company you go with. And the playground equipment has a 15 to eight year, 18 year lifespan. The warranty, I believe, is four years on the equipment. So if anything breaks, gets broken, gets replaced, people come out within the four years, fix it, free of charge. Yes. In that case, is that renewable? 
year after year, or what does that work? No, once 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 I think the three or four years is up, that that's it. Once that happens, what usually happens is we'll call Miracle up and say uh, one of the slides broke. Uh, we would then purchase the slide and we would then repair it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And four years, that's a, a four year warranty. Uh, that's their standard warranty. They can't extend that out six years. Well, usually, usually it's, it's a, a two year to three year warranty. Miracle gives us a four year warranty because we have such a good relationship with them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can I just ask, I couldn't tell from the pictures, and this is sort of just a general question for all parks. Is there a way that we can put a recycling bin next to every garbage can? I, I've noticed there's just, they're few and far between. And if the recycling bin is across the park, people are not gonna walk over there to to dump their you know Gatorade bottle or yeah, water so, bottle. So the, the new receptacles, one's gonna be garbage, one's gonna be recycling. Is it the dual, Jeff, or are they separate cans? No, they're, they're separate cans. Okay. But we only put them in now in pairs. We don't put yeah. them in separately. You're right. Yeah. That mm -hmm. used to be a big pet peeve, even down by yeah. the baseball fields. Like the kids all have a Gatorade bottle and there's no recycling bin. And yeah, years ago, in pairs now. And years, right. ago to, years ago down at the harbor, we had none. And it was a struggle to get either one of them, a trash yeah. bin or a recyclable bin. Um, and it was a, a long struggle, and we finally got them on soccer fields on both sides. Yeah, we have, we have a total of 51 cans we put out for the season. Right. Uh, Jay, can you go back to the, the Rosa quote, please? Just so everybody get a chance to, to see it. Do you have um, like the a similar close up view to the the shade picture again of the other side of the playground? No, he didn't. Uh, the okay. company didn't put it in a a file like that for that okay. side. Uh, I could certainly get one if you would like one. Uh, it's more just for personal pro like it's nice to see it up close because the other views are a little small to see the details, but. I don't think I'll it'll really change change anything, but <laughs> I'll email him tomorrow and I'll ask him for for one anyway. Thank you. We have it. So you Jeff, still, I'm sorry. You still can't add any swings, even though you're going to be out moving two trees. Yeah, because uh, because of the fall zones of the playgrounds. Okay. We need the space. So because of this climbing uh, apparatus here and the blue the light blue slide. Okay. We need a certain distance away from the swings to, to that area. Okay. Inclusive takes up a lot of space. It always has. That's where the problem is. And there's not much space at that park. Right, yeah. right. And the, and the ramps, which I think we talked about last meeting, um, which I think are necessary for, for, inclusive, for an inclusive playground, they limit what we can put and how we can lay it out because they need certain depths and heights and, and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. And Jeff, have you awarded the, uh, the contract to DeRosa? No, I haven't awarded the contract to anybody yet. I'm still waiting for other quotes. Okay. De, DeRosa was the first one to send the quote in. So that's, that's the number okay. I have to go off of right now. Okay. I'm still waiting and for other quotes. And Tommy's a great guy, and he's, you know, he did Mermeric High School. I don't need to tell you the artificial feel there. And he's a local town. He was born and raised in this community, so hopefully he'll get it. Yep, yep. He, he's the only one who, uh, who put in a quote so far, so. And um, if the, the business is in the village, they get a 5% buffer versus like a non per, our, per the procurement policy. Right. So that helps, too, for village business uh, owners. He's a great guy. Uh, and then we're going to replace the whole perimeter fence with a new uh, five foot tall uh, black vinyl coated chain link. Uh, replace all the poles, uh, get all the weeds and the ivy off of some of the fencing. We're going to have uh, the ADA latches, right, Jeff? For the ADA. yeah, for in and out and ADA latches. 
new gates, the new whole nine. signage, everything. Thank you yes, for doing so black vinyl, by the way, as yes. opposed to the plain old silver chain link. Oh uh, yeah, no, we're we're upgrading. Jennifer, park commissioner is aware that we um, we have someone else to try to cr create some longevity with our shade structures. We have someone else put them up and take them down. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they're aware, but uh, so like the Columbus Park shade structure that we have over the swing sets, we actually have a professional playground installer remove and install that shade every year to prolong it lasting longer than expected. Mm -hmm. So most playgrounds leave their, their stuff up, which is totally fine by standards, but mm -hmm. uh, we actually hire a company to come in and uh, disconnect it, uninstall it, and reinstall it back in the spring. So, so it doesn't sag, it doesn't rip, it doesn't, it doesn't break. None of that. Will they clean the moss off of it and all that other good stuff, Jeff? Yeah. So, so when he takes it down, he he sprays it with like kind of like a rubber conditioner, okay, to keep it from getting hard and cracking. Right. And and then he cleans it off, and then he folds it nicely and gives it back to me. And at right. the beginning of next uh, right. spring, I hand it back to him, and he does the same thing. He, he sprays some kind of conditioner on it to keep it uh, like a rubber band to keep it tight. Mm -hmm. So it's, Great. it's good work that he does. Excellent. And that's Look, it for the Jefferson Avenue Playground. It looks great to me. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Um, Tina, let me just summarize it real quick. So like the okay. financial, portion yeah. just so we're all on the same page <laughs> so uh between the uh the miracle playground equipment which was one hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars and 88 cents that's the equipment the rubber surface and the installation of the equipment the additional sidewalks uh cobblestone fencing basketball resurfacing is 145,000 so we're estimating the cost to be three hundred forty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. Um, but in speaking with Jeff and with Jerry, um, we would like to uh, ask you, and then ultimately ask the board, to put in a, a ten percent contingency. And Jeff can just really quick explain why we think we need that. So the ten percent contingency is for basically the rising cost of every material that we need to use. Um, blacktop fluctuates day to day. Uh, no one really knows at 7 a.m. in the morning when they go to the blacktop plant what they're going to be paying for that day. So by the time we actually are ready to lay down the new court and the new walkways, we, don't, we can't anticipate what the price is going to be. So we, we need a little buffer in there to anticipate it being astronomically high. Uh, also, you have material like cement, uh, paint. We don't really know what that's going to be at, at the beginning of next week. Everything goes up and down so much that it's it's hard to put a dialed in number on building materials right now. Right, and we, you know, the playground equipment is going to take ten months from from when the purchase order is given. Ten months to twelve to a year, uh, so it's hard you know, in order to give those purchase orders, we have to ask the board uh, to authorize us that money, but they do, we'll give the purchase order, but 10 months from now, things could change. Things could get cheaper and we pay less or things could get more expensive and we pay more. So that's why we're asking, we're gonna ask the board for what we estimate to be the cost and then the contingency buffer. Well, the playground stuff, isn't that, firm i mean because that's a done yeah. deal but i understand like the fencing the, 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 stuff the other is stuff is still up in the air yep okay Play, playground price is firm okay aren't, aren't you better off asking for a 15 percent buffer rather than the 10 it's better to be under than over because like you know with blacktop petroleum of course you know we can go on and on and on <laughs> rather than going back to the board and saying you need an additional five percent or ten percent because of cost increases and 5% really is not going to amount to much, I don't think, an additional 5 
15 is better than 10, I think. And it's better I'll to come it. under than rather than a transfer of some kind. Yeah, inflation and, right now is almost like uh, 8%, right? Right. And so you got you to gotta factor that in. And like you said, Jeff, you don't know what the cost of it tomorrow. So you probably want to go a little higher and, and get, get a little bold a little bit because you have some buffer in there, you know? More of a cushion is better than less. Mm -hmm. Will do. Thank you. So what we, you need us to vote on approving the cost and the plan? Um, so we would like you to one, approve the plan, uh, two, uh, approve the cost, um, the funding source. So uh, Jerry's on this call, but the funding source would be, or we would ask it to be the trust fund, which has a balance of four hundred and thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-nine dollars and thirty-nine cents. Right. So if we, I didn't, with the ten percent contingency, we would have a balance of uh, fifty-four thousand nine hundred. Uh, with fifteen percent, we're going to have a balance left of thirty-four. I don't know, thirty-four. So right. Uh, so we wouldn't wipe it out we would take a, a nice chunk of it uh to do this park um but the alternative i think uh jerry if you wouldn't mind what is the alternative because that's not really my wheelhouse i know we talked about this the alternative is fund balance or i don't know what the alternative is capital so let me give you let me give you a calculation you have some kind of open up a, a calculator on your on your laptop or something like that so since the playground equipment is um is firm at 200,000. Take the balance of the, of the project, which is what, one, one, 140, 145. 145. And do 15% of 140 as a contingency because we have a firm price on the playground. Okay. And that's the number that the board, um, the commissioners uh, um, would be considering to approve. And then from there, so that's still, that balances out to, to um, close to where we were anyway maybe a little bit less than where we were as far as asking for contingency. So we're asking for 15% contingency. That's 21,000, 15% right. of 145,000 is $21,750. Right, so we know that the playground's a firm price. They're not gonna, they're not gonna uh, increase that. They better not increase that. And we will, um, we will have a 15% contingency on the fluctuating items, which is fence, blacktop, curbing, those kinds of things. Uh, and that covers that covers those costs. So then, um, what we would do is just put it through the trust fund because that's the best way to utilize that money. It's not that the money, you know, we don't need to save it anymore for a rainy for a rainy day or or anything like that. We need to improve our parks. That's really what it's for. And it's really so, not a trust fund, right? It's a right. recreation. I mean, that's the it's not a trust fund. You're right. It's a park. It was fund. collected. Nor is right. It was collected just for that reason. Is that money replenished or is that like, where did that money come from? It's, well, it's only replenished um, when projects are done. Building so it's permits. A recreation fee that's charged right. for construction projects, residential construction right. projects. So it's a per unit fee. Can you see this email? Yeah, no? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. And Jason, that was my question because we've always separated out into two distinct recreation areas. So when you said you had 437 or whatever the number was, right. weren't we saying some of it should be used in one area of, of Mamaronek and some should be used to enhance a separate area? So now we're just going to use it all for the one park? Is that what? What's um, that's what the original thought process is, was behind it. Um, until we realized, I think, I mean, we were hoping we'd get two parks out of this money when we first looked at this. And it's just so expensive. So what do you, what do we do? Do we, do we split it up and get less for each park or do we just take one park and just overhaul it that needs it desperately? I think. Um, we, got, we got the swings in Columbus Park. I mean, we, that's the first time we used it. We used it for the swings mm -hmm. in Columbus Park. And I think one of the goals was to try and use it in neighborhoods where the buildings had been built. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. So it was- So if you I look think, at the Mason, 
Right, if you look at the Mason, we only have Bud Walker Park and Genenzio Park, right? Right. In that neighborhood. So Columbus is the closest. And Columbus Park. And Columbus Park. In that neighborhood. But there have been some construction. There has been some, some construction, you know, right. in and around the Jefferson area. So. Yeah. Not as much, but. Not as much, well, right. Yeah, but it's long overdue because we used to have a program we were supposed to do with like a, a park every five years or rubbering and so forth. And that's mm -hmm. like just about the last one other than Harbor Island that needs to be addressed as well in the future. Um, most of the parks have gone through a, a renovation within the last uh, 15 to 20 years. We have and to do Stanley, Carlo. Stanley yeah, I know. But, yeah. No, I, just, I hear you loud and clear, Jason, but I don't think Jefferson has been touched. No. Stanley was... Stanley was done probably about 15 years ago or 20 maybe, but Jefferson, I don't think has ever been touched. But to address, yeah, to, to address Kristen's point, um, the, the board of trustees may have the same thought process mm -hmm. when it goes before the board because they have to approve, they have to approve this funding to be released. So they could there, have the is, same thought process. Is there any harm in, in, in taking, you know, half from the trust and half from the village? I mean, my understanding is the village has a bit of money this year um is yeah. is there any reason and then we and then we have money to start off on the next park so this is the this is this is the risk in in that and because we're we're really focusing on our rivers and dredging and other work um like areas where um we're um we're concerned about our offices and and staff um you know using our older buildings there has been quite a bit of money that has been um either appropriated or will be requested on Monday night. And so the risk kind of comes into where, you know, where we have all these other projects, maybe recreation, you know, this, this money can only be used for recreation. So right. it never really comes into play that, you know, we have maybe more critical areas to, to focus on uh, if the board or if this commission wants to split it up. So my only concern, I just, just my, my final point is, is Jeff and Jason have presented us over the last year with an extensive list of work that has to be done in parks across right. the village. And right. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just would be concerned that we would spend it all here. And then the, the, the 15 items, 20 items on those lists oh. will never get, will never. So I think we just want a commitment that, that as Carlo said, we get back to a, a, a planned, um, mm -hmm you know, attentiveness to the parks that has been ignored. And, and this fund was started probably about 20 years ago. And we only utilized it last year for the first time or two years ago for the, uh, the swing set. And this will be the second time that we'll be dipping into it. It has never been touched. Never. Until well, for time for the swings. Well we, well, we have enough then to do what needs to be done in Florence Park. Not, not with these funds. Is, so how was that going to be paid for? Because we, you know, we all discussed it and thought so, that we couldn't wait. So for, for Florence Park, it's right. uh, taking up the rubber surface and putting down the wood chips. But that equipment is fine or does it need new equipment also? That equipment needs to be replaced also, along with a lot of other parks in the village. But... Um, Florence is fixable. It's repairable. It we could get a few more years out of it without it being a safety issue. Um, there's other parks that um, we deal with that we can't get parts for anymore. They don't make the parts. No one deals with the company who built it. So Florence, the issue with that is the rubber flooring creates a tripping hazard. Um, because uh, the state contracts and the shortage of wood chips, the engineered fiber wood chips is still going on. We go back there every day when we pick up garbage in that park. We see what's loose. We cut it out. Uh, I go there when the park's packed. I talk to parents. Uh, I talk to the nannies that are there. I talk to the kids. My kids go to that park every day. Um, they would rather see us go there and cut it back as much as possible before ripping it up and replacing it with wood chips. Um, we're getting further and further away from the danger zones, let's call them. If a kid were to trip, they would bump their head on the monkey bar pole or anything. We're getting further and further away from those tripping 
zones. So it's a, li a little combination of when we could get the pricing for the new material and if the people using the park are okay with us still cutting out the loose top and leaving as much rubber as we can there for as long as we can. Okay. I, I mean, I, just going back to like what Kristen said, the only thought I had was to use the trust fund money to pay Miracle, but then the village should find the money to pay for the other stuff being that it's mm -hmm. not technically the playground. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's stuff that the village is supposed to maintain anyway. Yeah. So however it's presented, it's presented. That's fine. I mean, no I, I, I just don't, I, I know it needs to be done. And I think that it's probably the park that hasn't had anything done in the longest amount of time. I just would hate for that money not to get replenished. And then another park needs something. Cause I feel like Florence is heavily used and that equipment was probably before, I think Stanley was done after Florence. So like, I feel like if, I don't know, I just don't want there to not be money, but that's just also how I think. So I don't know what everybody else thinks. I have a quick question. Um, well, two questions. To that point, Tina, like if we were to only approve the funds to be used just for the playground equipment and not for the other, like, um, I don't even know what the right word is, but the other things that are outside of the actual playground equipment um, and surfacing and that kind of thing, um, would it would we be able to do it? Or is it like, if we don't get all of this work approved, then it's not possible to actually install the playground equipment? So that's, um, that's the first question. <laughs> so we wouldn't, so I don't think Jerry would let me bring a project to the board or to you that we can only half complete. You know what I mean? So I think right they would, that. yeah. So I think that they would find a way to, to, you know, capital fund it. I don't, I don't know what the clerk treasures in the man, but you know, it just ultimately it's the board that's going to determine where the money comes from. I, we can make a recommendation, but ultimately they'll approve the funding and the project. Well, it, like, I mean, you guys know the parks better than any of us. Like, do you think that I'm wrong that that we won't need the money? You know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, I probably know the parks better than anybody. <laughs> and if I was to be honest, which I, I'm always honest, if we took half of that money and paid for Jefferson Avenue Park playground equipment, the rest of the money that's left over will not pay for any serious upgrade equipment in any of the park. You have to remember the smallest park in list goes Ward Avenue Park, Jefferson Avenue Park. Stanley Avenue Park is two big pieces of playground equipment. So I'm just using Stanley example. If we half cut the fund just to pay for the equipment at Jefferson, and then we go to use the rest of the fund for Florence Park, Stanley Avenue, um, Warren Avenue Park, the Harbor, it's not going to cover the playground equipment that we would be looking to install because we're, we're, we're trying to, to make it inclusive ADA compliant that adds extra money to, we're trying to get rid of problems that cause infrastructure failure by replacing trees close in proximity to the equipment with shade structures and plant trees elsewhere in the park. So it keeps the infrastructure for longer. So if we were to half this fund to just pay for the equipment for Jefferson, I don't think there's gonna be enough money left over to fund another park besides maybe Ward Avenue Park without requesting extra funding from the board to then pay for infrastructure and additional equipment costs. So that, that's just my, my view on it. And I think, you know, we've been really trying to get a five-year capital plan, which we haven't had previously. And so we're closer. We haven't adopted one yet, but we're closer. And I think, you know, 
we have been sort of funding things traditionally in the village just as they come up. And we need to fund things, you know, more systematically. And, it, you know, we can't, we can't do four parks in four years. It's just not, there isn't funding for that. Um, and so I think, um, I think that the conversation you're having is a conversation the Board of Trustees will have is what, like, what, you know, should we use portion of this and, and bond some of it? Should we um, have like funds in the rainy day in, in the in the parks in the parks fund um, or the recreation fund in case there's an emergency repair that needs to happen or is that something that comes out? So I think that's part of the conversation we've been having. We adopted the budget last week. We need to keep talking about the um, five-year capital plan, which is like, you know, a rolling five-year capital plan. It keeps on going. So right. um, I think this, you know. This is the park that's slated for renewal next. And we don't quite know when we'll be able to fund the one at Florence Park. I mean, that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. but, but historically, I mean, if you look at Stanley, you look at Daniel Warren, look at Florence, those have come out of the general fund. They yeah. never came out of that trust historically. This is the first time that we've gone this route. Mm -hmm. Right. And Harbor Island basically came with a, uh, a fundraiser, we'll say, whether it was yeah. the materials slash labor as well. So this is the first that we we're doing um, through this fund. All the other ones previously were done through other sources, financial sources. The other thing that I wanted to ask about is um, I know that initially when we talked about this, it was urgent to do Jefferson Everson Avenue Park because Columbus Park will be closed during the flood mitigation work. So um, that community will then like be, it, there'd be pedestrian traffic walking to Jefferson because it's the next mm -hmm. closest park. Um, unless, well, Stanley is in the other direction, but um, so that to me, I, I wasn't sure if we have timing on that yet when that will happen and like when Columbus Park would then be closed for Jefferson then to be used probably in a much larger capacity than it currently is being used, even though it's like maybe a third of the size of, of Columbus Park. So um, just wanted to call that out because if that area is closed, like we need Jefferson Park to be in a better place. I, but I, I'm not sure if the timing on that still stands that way. So the, um, um, we haven't been told about the timing um, as far as year, month, or year on this on the project. The only thing that I know about the Stanley, um, the Columbus Park area is that'll be done last. So it's quite a few years down the road, but it'll take us a significant amount of time to get Jefferson up and running as well. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's why we're doing it first, because because of that reason. Because you know, purchase order tomorrow, ten months to even get the equipment. That's a year; it's gone, right? So that's why we got to get a move on it. Because you know, once we approve this, it's a, another year before we can even start the work and construction. Yeah, and I wouldn't go anywhere near Ward Park because there's a lot of work that's going to happen there with the Army Corps. So I, I just that off I, the list. I just feel like if if we take it out of the funding, it just it. You all have seen the capital list that that I've put in, and there's parks on that capital list. So I feel if we could get a jump start on one park with this fund balance, and then hopefully get another park approved in the capital, that's that's almost two parks approved in five years. So we're we're ahead of the game. We could start catching up now. That, that's just my opinion on it. And then getting on a better cycle. Yes. Yep. So it, it's, real cycle. it's basically yeah. like Jefferson, Jefferson, we won't ask the board for money for, we could just go ahead and do that. And then we could ask the board for one of the capital projects, Stanley, the Harbor, you know, I have, I have multiple ones on the capital list and hopefully that gets a yes. And now we're looking at, we just rebuilt two brand new parks within five years and we could keep that ball rolling and not be so far behind. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion on it. You know, so I mean, um, Harbor Island Park had to be 
21 years ago, right? Something like that. When we, when, when everybody put that together and it was, you know, it was like a barn building, right? It was mm -hmm. an old fashioned barn building. And, um, you know, you wonder what, and that, you know, that hasn't happened again, but I wonder whether that's, you know, whether there's a way of um, engaging the community into trying to fundraise for parks equipment for some park, you know. Hasn't been, I'm sorry. Didn't they go through, aren't they going through a discussion with that already? Nor for Harbor Island? On Rushmore, on the Rushmore side. On the Rushmore side. I'm just, oh, on the Rushmore side, yeah. got it. I mean, you know, I think that, um, you know, the people who, a lot of the people who did that aren't around anymore, uh, where they okay. don't live in the village. Yep, um, true. And, you know, all those kids are out of college now, all those kids yep. so much are, um, including mine. But um, <laughs> you know, I think it's that maybe that's, um, something else to pursue we're not going to get another recreation fund we're not going to get a fund that's that big it, 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 there was a lot of construction that happened and we didn't use it for a very long period of time so that that's mm -hmm. sort of it's not found money but it's kind of a one shot and um it's not going to get replenished to the point where we can do two parks in the near future i think jeff's really right about that and i agree i'm i'm also in contact with uh uh, I call him Captain John. I only know him by his first name, but John and June Ottinger, they're with Friends of Florence Park. And me and Jason have met with them, I don't know, four or five times in the past year, Jay? Yeah, I'd say so. And, and I'm, I'm, I bring them in because they were the ones who really headlined mm -hmm. Harbor Island Park. And I, I bring them in and I show them what's going on with it and what can be repaired and what can't be repaired, what pieces we can't get. So, so the dialogue's there that uh, we're in need of a Harbor Island Park playground, and uh, that they they seem interested. So, so that may be another strategy that we should pursue. Yeah, because Harbor Island playground—that's in terrible shape. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's the most utilized um, park. Yep. Maybe in the county. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, right. Does anybody right. else commission have an opinion or want to say anything? Jeff, one thing you were talking about wood chips rather than rubber, that's just temporary, right? That would be temporary until until we could redo the park because got it. Uh, the price quote I got was $207,000 to replace the rubber. Right. Uh, I don't think that it's a wise decision to spend that kind of money on a piece of playground equipment that's nearing the end of its life. I, I'd rather um, just put the wood chips in for now, get us the couple years left, and then redo the park all at once. It's just too big of a too big of a uh, too big of monies to spend right. on on that old equipment. Right. So it's just temporary. It's just temporary. Through. Got it. Okay, nobody else has any comments? No, are we just voting then? I mean, it's yeah, not sure. that's where the money money comes from. So I don't even think that needs to be, that's not something that we can like, oh, I, I thought we, we have no had... say on that, right? Thought... As far as where the money's coming well, from? Well, we have a, an estimated cost of, you know, 364818. That's the estimated cost of with the contingency. But the board we, is going to ultimately decide how that money is funded. So Right, but that's my point. So I'm saying if we're just voting to approve the plan, the design, the project, et cetera, correct. where the money comes from is up to the board. Yep. Correct. So, so we, I don't, think, we don't have to approve it coming out of the trust fund. Mm -mm. No. But I think all, but all the conversation you had is, you know, beneficial. And that's something that Jerry and I can convey. Right. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you guys convinced me, but I don't think it should be regular practice. You know, I understand it needs to be done, um, and before it was never taken, so maybe it should just be managed better in the future. Or it said it won't be replenished, so this is it. When it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. You can, you know, not <laughs> yeah. as big as it, as I mean, it is now. It's not likely to be. I mean, it took a long time to build up. 
you know, I actually think that's sort of interesting. At some point, we had the information about which, you know, which buildings contributed which amount. And then, of course, it's been in the bank earning some interest. So it's taken a while to build up. The, okay. visit, the biggest uh, sum we got was 172000 and that was in 2017, 690 Mimaranek Avenue. All the other sums were 50000 or less. Majority of the businesses or the buildings gave us, you know, eight grand. 15 grand, 2000. So, but the biggest was a 690 Merrick Avenue. And we haven't had anything added since 2019 onto this list. Okay. I, I think in, in, um, in an effort to move things along, I think we mm -hmm. have to get going on this. We could talk about this to a blue in the face, but we, we've been talking for an hour and we still have four more items on the agenda. Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so, can I have a motion to approve the Jefferson Park? design and the pricing um, as presented from Miracle and DeRosa with a 15% contingency on the DeRosa bid. All motion, Brittany. Second. Kristen, All motion. raise your hand. Carla. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I think that was everyone. I, Manny's on the phone and I can't see Cindy, so I don't know about them, but. I'm here, I'm good, yes. Cindy's a yes, Manny's on the phone. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Um, let's go to the event request because I think the code violations might be a long conversation too. Yeah, we could, we could, we could, we could we always put, you could always put it on the June meeting too. Okay. Uh, the event request is simple. That's Marinic Avenue School, first grade, Dos Caminos. They want to do a picnic in the park. Um, I think I have, this is the first one I got all the paperwork from, but I think there's three other MAS schools and the senior high school. Um, so it's a it's 100 kids and parents and teachers. Insurance has been approved and approved already. Um, the school district has agreed to pay $600 per trip to the park. That will include parking for their guests because these are after Memorial Day. Uh, so we get a little fee for it and the kids have a good time in the park. Hopefully good weather. And hopefully good. They have rain dates too. The kids have rain dates. So I think we do kindergarten, first grade, second grade, all from Maranek Avenue School. And then we do a senior day with the high school. And it's days the park's not that busy anyway. Uh, yeah, weekdays, all the other kids are in school. You know, yeah. school's still in session, obviously. They bus them here to the park with the school buses. And, yeah, you know, they have lunch. They use the playground. They use the play kickball on the field. So it's cool. Yeah, they've been doing it for years. I went with my kids for little. So it's, yeah, you know. I, every, uh, forever and ever mm -hmm. I've been here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Even before you. <laughs> I just like to bring um, larger events to you guys, you know, ones that are going to be, you know, this is probably going to be 150 or more people or so, you know, parents. So, so just it's good that everyone's aware when there's a larger event going on in the harbor or the park. So we don't have to vote or anything. It's up to you, but technically no, but it's up to you if you want to. Okay. How about, does anybody, is anybody have any concerns or opposed to this? I think it's lovely. I think, I think, I think we're all good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let the tradition continue. Um, do we want to do code violations or do you want to do that next time? I think we're going to be in a discussion that's... Or, yeah, I think it's going to be too That's deep. going to be a long discussion for right. sure. That's probably... Jason, you said listen, we could move that to June? We can move that to June. Just, just so everyone's aware, we generally, historically, we don't meet in July and August. Uh, because we're pretty busy and commissioners also kind of liked it because they get to go on vacation and stuff and relax. Um, so, but we could put this on in June. Um, there might be a few smaller items. I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, but because I think this is going to take up mm -hmm. the majority of our meeting time. It's going to be another hour. Right. If we, if we start it now, I'm sure. So maybe right. we could just so do maybe the parks and rec update and, yeah. and that's it. I'll move it to June. We'll do the parks and rec update and then we can call it a wrap because we usually finish within the next few minutes generally. Do so. we have to vote to move it 
or no? Uh, no. Um, I, oh. I'll, I'll note it, Tina, and we'll okay. just put it on June. Yeah. So, whichever, whoever wants to go first, parks update or rec update? <laughs> uh, I can do it just a super, super quick rundown. So, um, we're working on camp, hiring camp counselors. Uh, that's going pretty good. We do need a few more counselors. So if anyone is interested, let them know, 16 and up. Um, we are full with camp. We have 315 campers registered. Uh, I have 18 kids on scholarship and it's a little under $20,000 in scholarships we gave and they're all on the free or reduced lunch program. So that's going well. Uh, we opened uh, preseason boat ramp parking. So we have the attendance in the booth on Saturdays and Sundays uh, for collection of the preseason boat ramp. The marina also, even though that's not my domain, the marina also opened up on this past Sunday. So the boaters, the, the slip holders are putting their boats in and whatnot. Um, we have uh, working on ton of different events, uh, Emlyn Theater concerts, Tiki Invasion, movies in the park, um, a ton of different facility rentals and birthday parties, large and small. Um, so it's going on. Jeff might talk about the paving, but the paving is continuing uh, and should be done hopefully before the end of May. That's the paving of Harbor Island Park. Um, yeah, all the permits are going well, uh, like all the Youth sports permits are going well. Uh, adult leagues, softball started, volleyball starting on Monday. Uh, so all the adult leagues are going. Uh, so everything's good in the rec world. We're getting super, super busy. Um, so, yeah. Jason. Yes. Sharing employees. You got my, you got my guy down there helping you. Oh, right. Um, so... Jerry has a, um, I don't know what the official capacity of the title is, like administrative intern or something like that uh, in his office. And uh, Neary is his name. Neary comes down to uh, the Parks and Recreation Pavilion on Mondays and Wednesdays to help with seasonal permits, which I forgot to mention. So, you know, the beach passes and the, it's really busy in my office right now collecting all the passes. Uh, we opened on April 1st, the first Monday in April. So we've been open for about a month. And uh, I think we're up to like 20 something thousand dollars, which is all collected in small increments, checks and stuff. So uh, there's a lot of computer processing. Uh, so Jerry is giving us some help. And that person, uh, not that necessary for Parks and Rec, but so you know, that person's like a, like a jack of all trades near. He does like HR. I think he helps with like legal filings. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Courtney's office and Jerry's office and Dan Sarnoff. Uh, so, and now recreation. So he's really a helpful tool um, because we're all spread a little thin. Fluent in Spanish and lives in the, in the neighborhood. Yep, lives right down the street. He's fluent in Spanish, which is helpful. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Any questions for me, feel free to ask. Otherwise, Jeff is free to take the wheel. Carlo? Um I'll be super, super fast. I don't want to start like a whole nother discussion, but I'm um, just thinking about um, spending time at Harbor Island Park. I, my kids are on like a little bit of a later schedule than most people, but I know the park just clears out at lunchtime when all the kids go home for lunch. Has there been, I know occasionally there's a food truck in Harbor Island Park in the parking lot, but I feel like that would be a huge win for the town to like have. Oh, uh, we um, have, um, yeah, Britt, we have, I think Charles, I'll double check and I can send you an email. I think Charles book seven this summer paid a village's fee. We have like a a process to get the food trucks. Uh, we're starting to schedule them now near the playground. Um, it's a, the food truck game is interesting because like if they have a private party, they'll just go to that because it's guaranteed money. So, but we're working on the schedule, but I think we have seven trucks in rotation. Yeah, uh, I signed up on a new one today. Yeah, there's quite a, there's quite a few. So they come down to my office to spend specifically in the Harbor and then they got to go up to like Sally Roberts to get their peddlers permit and all that stuff and all that. Um, but yeah, we do have seven, um, Charles in my office, my office assistant handles the scheduling because, uh, we also have Dave, uh, the, the shack, yeah, the bait shop. There's a food truck there that's also open all the time. 
Um, so we do, we try to do one at the playground and then one obviously that's always at the bait shop. Um, so in theory, there should be so much to be able to get some lunch or a drink at any time in the harbor. In theory, well, the Dave should be open or the food truck should be there. Okay. Yeah, that's Dave Castorelli. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that Jesus, uh, Dave Castorelli. He's a local guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a local. He lives um down in the flats as well too. Yeah. Um, and so he he uh, uh, Jerry actually we just re um redid it for the year. Um, he has a license agreement with the village for the bait shop and to have the food truck that's right next to the bait shop. Mm -hmm. so, so I got a question. Jerry, it's for you. Um, I've always asked about the county pier. Where do we stand with that? Jeff, Jeff told me last, last fall, I think we were gonna order lights. And now that the, the county has gotten awarded $190 million from mm -hmm. the, uh, the state, the funds are mm -hmm. there. Jerry, so I explained to them about that piece of land. Carlo, you know, did you read week. the minutes? Carl, yeah. Carlo wasn't here last week. I no. know. Okay. But, okay, but okay, if you read the right. minutes, the last update we got is in the minutes about yeah, what well, Jason was just going like, to say. I didn't read it because I didn't participate. Because I forgot <laughs> well, they, and no one decided to text me. Otherwise, it would have been there. <laughs> so I've always asked this question for the last 25 years. And, and all it does is get kicked down the road, the yeah. can. So the county, the county got uh, a little delayed by the DEC, uh, the DEC's permit uh, for the county to start construction started on April 1st. I received a call on April 10 or 11, I can't remember. And the county was stressed out because they did not have a mitigation project was, which is required in their permit. So they explained that um, at one time they had um, presented and thought that a, a, a walkway uh, project in the Harbor Island Park would have been a, an appropriate mitigation project. They had to abandon that. And what they did was they've um, gotten into a, an agreement with a property, a dilapidated house and a large property on Taylor's Lane to expand the, um, the, the naturalized area there. And that qualifies, and since it's available and it was in an estate, um, it qualifies as a mitigation project. So as soon as they close on that project, they are ready to start construction. I haven't talked to uh, Commissioner Kopecki yet to see what date they're closing on that property, but I think they had already made an offer and the offer was accepted in April. They were just letting me down easy by telling us that uh, you know we're not gonna be contributing to the improvements at your park because we have to shift to another area. So I can try to connect with him this week or next week and see what their actual construction date is. But of course, they may not have one because they're supposed to contact us. But that's as much as I can tell you as far as what's going on, you know, inside baseball stuff. And so they're supposed think... to contact Jeff on for staging like, like way ahead of time. And they haven't done that yet either. So, yeah. So do you truly think that we're going to have a shovel in the ground this year? Well, they have a two-year permit and it started April 1st. So they're stressed okay. out. Okay. So if anything motivating them it's the fact that their top their clock is ticking right now okay the clock is ticking so because you know a month in on their yeah. permit yeah so. and that's going to enhance the park big time i think so it's going to get worse before it gets better though that's for sure yeah absolutely it's been deteriorating yeah, yeah. so Jerry, while you're on, can you update us on the dog cart? Because that's been a monthly question. I wish I could. I don't have any <laughs> um, that's I get on, it's on dog. Jeff's list, remember? Yeah. Jeff promised me it's on his list. He's a list guy, and he said it's on there. <laughs> if, we, if we go to the Parks Department update, I can fill you guys in. That's cool. Let's do it. Let's move it along. <laughs> Come on, people. All right. So... So I'll start off. I'll start off with the dog park. I had fencing companies come in. I'm waiting for estimates for the fencing and the electronic latches and the gates right. for the dog park. Mm -hmm. uh, I told you it was on my list, and but I'll I be, told you I'm a list man. Yep. <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be pulling away from that because, as um, as my two coworkers will tell you today, we had a large project meeting. Um, and I think, what did we, ta what did we, we tackled eight large projects, I think in the village right now. And 
large projects um, are a million dollars plus that we have going on. So actually no uh, prospect and prospect and, and is, is uh, around 70,000. So that's not exactly true, but we have um, some serious projects going on. Uh, a lot of it has to do with issues with the DEC, orders on consent, um, legal action from uh, environmental entities. And so I've been focused on that significantly um, up to and including, uh, um, you know, the, the Mamaronek Reservoir Dam and, and those kinds of things. So I kind of handed it off to Jeff. Of course, I'm always available for anything, but really I'm only available for a quick phone call and make a decision. And then I have to, you know, I have to get off the phone to go back to other stuff. So I but, heard um, at our yeah. large projects meeting that the just to test soil will cost forty thousand dollars. I was shocked. Just to like okay. test sample Fraud soil. Fraud dredging. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's how expensive every all these projects are. Yep. A lot of money. Projects that complicate. And so, uh, so who will fund the dog park if we can go ahead with it? Mm -hmm. So we can get fence in and we can start doing that kind of stuff, but I, I'm, I'm pretty much handing that off. I'm going to have to do that to the, give that to the park the general foreman. So I've, had, yeah. I've had three, uh, three contractors in waiting for the estimates back. Uh, once those estimates come back, I have protocol to follow to bring it to the board. And that's what I'm going to do. So, so I can I can tell you though that you'll be somewhat disappointed on the parking because I have we have 5.5 million dollar sewer remediation project sewer repair project that's going on. We're about um, over 80 percent complete on the first phase. Uh, in June, I'm sorry, in July, at the end of July, I'll be be starting the second phase, which is additional three million dollars. In order for these contractors to continue to work, I have to occupy that parking area where it would be um, it would be utilized with the dog park users. So we may have fence and a gate before we actually have parking for uh, for our, our dog park users, um, which I guess is okay. But it's really have no choice. I have to get the construction done because it's it's a it's a um, it's a state order on consent that I have to try to um, um, resolve. And the state has left us alone because we're working diligently on the project, but they won't leave us alone until the project is complete, which will probably be summer of 2024. I don't think the parking is as big of a deal as actually having, you know, the park. a fenced in park with, you know, okay a gate and so it's still contained and I don't think the, the parking is as big of an issue. Yes, it'll be nice if it, it can happen, but I think it's more important to actually just have the enclosed park itself. So I'm not really that concerned about the parking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. so th but yeah. thank you for letting us know. Yeah, yeah but I, it, and again, Manny, are you on, Manny? I'm, I'm here, yep. So, you know, we've been screaming for a basketball court for years. Yes, and I think the community as a whole would utilize the court and the summer campers and there are other projects in the community that need to be addressed prior to a dog park, I feel. For example, yeah. Tompkins, uh, Tompkins Avenue Bridge, the fire department, the police department's building and so forth. But we've been screaming for a basketball court and also for a volleyball area. And, you know, I think the community as a whole would utilize those uh, areas more than the dog park. So... Oh. Do you have uh, this for basketball and volleyball, but there is no place for a dog park. So there is no existing dog park, but there are existing basketball courts and volleyball courts. Just not down at Harbor Island. That's true. We we know not we know that we disagree about this. So I don't think there's there you know, and that's fine. And there, we don't need to, you know we know Carlo's opinion, we know my opinion, we know Tina's opinion, and they're all fine. And no, I don't think anyone is more right or more wrong. It's just how we feel is what is more important than others. And so I the community as a whole. So we can have them all. Whole. We can have them all in Harbor Island Park. Once we get the county pier set, right. we can, right. me and Jeff, we're working to come up with a nice plan to incorporate that pier in, with the basketball. You know what I mean? We have that space. So we can have them all, hopefully. Yeah. It's a process. It, that's right. the one thing I've learned from, from being on this committee is, you know, you, you ask, 
why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? And until you're part of it, you don't really understand why it's not happening. But once you're part of it, you get it. And everything just takes like, it's like molasses. It's so, fun. I mean, know, it's, I mean, we've been talking about this playground at Jefferson for, I don't know how many meetings, you know, it's right. a process and we're going as fast as we can, but it's still a process. And then from here, it has to go to the board and it might go to a board work session. It might not be taken up the first time because they're busy and it might wait another month. And it, that's just the process. So we get it. We just, everyone's got to be patient. But we're still pushing all for what we want. We're all going to still push. Like I said to Jeff last week, I'm still going to ask. I know he's working on it, but I'm still, I, you have to keep the conversation going. Like Carlo yeah. keeps asking me the basketball court. I'm going to keep asking for a dog park because yeah, if we stop the, asking, it never, get, it will never happen. And Carlo, listen, I've been asking for the county peer for the last 25 years. Here we are. Yeah. Okay. Carlo, the basketball court will be next. Okay. Just for the record, I do not oh. have, I don't own a dog. <laughs> care more about sports so don't well, worry i'm thinking about the summer campers you know and how they can utilize I, it you know I, know I mean that's what i'm looking at is is you know the big picture you know what's going to get more utilization you know and you can do pickleboard uh, board and pickleball on it as well i mean you can go on and on and on and get more, more use out of it yes. and Pickle in addition one last yeah. thing i'm sorry in reference to the dog park uh frank marsala and you probably know him tina yes. the architect he's mm -hmm. more than willing to help and plan free. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was, he told me that this past week. Are we allowed so, to do that, Jerry or Jeff? Like, are we, or does the village have to pay somebody? He can volunteer sometime and we can work through, we can work through the process. Okay. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, that's no problem. And Carlo, smile in the fact that the county has a clock right now of two years yeah. at the DC. Is imposing because I know I live in the world of DEC clocks. So I was happy to hear that, by the way. Oh, that's progress. For 25 years, they never had a permit that <laughs> got a two year clock. On it. That's progress. All right. Let's let Jeff finish his. Let's, yeah. Seat. All right. Anything else, Jeff, that just you were getting, you got three, you're getting estimates, and that's where we're at at the moment. Just getting quotes for the fencing. Once those come in, I'll, I'll probably have them for the next meeting. We could discuss it. And like Jason said, it's a process, but just know that I'm working on the process. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll just run down a quick list of what's going on. We uh, started cutting grass. We cut 144 acres of grass each week. Um, we started weeding flower beds, mulching. Um, we're starting hanging baskets on Marinick Avenue soon. Uh, flower bed plantings. The only issue with that is the growers are holding off on sending the flowers in yet because it's still a little too cold for them. So it's gonna be a little later this year than usual. Uh, not a big deal. Usually it's warm enough in September where they last. Um, Carlo, you weren't here last meeting. We've, we've spread about 60 yards of topsoil just in Harbor, Park, Harbor Island Park alone. Um, the ridges near the baseball field are still on my list. I have, uh, a couple little jobs that are coming up where I'm gonna have some extra topsoil. So you will start seeing those ridges and stuff filled in. Um, including sinkhole? Including sinkhole. We got um, cleaning green day, Jeff, this weekend. We got cleaning green day this weekend. Um, we have uh, the dedication for the poetry garden on uh, May 13th or 12th. I think that it's that looks great. 13th. Uh, they're finally uh, dedicating that, and uh, we're just every day doing something. So, so one thing, Jeff, I want to add: we talked Bart. I talked Bartlett into doing a free workshop for our staff. Um, show them how to do um, pruning on street trees, and of course, it'll it'll extend to parks trees as well. But uh, they're going to come in for a full day of workshop uh, with our staff to provide more training. I've trained park staff, but they'll be doing um, uh, chipper safety. They'll also be doing um, work zone safety, those kinds of things. So that's important. I know Carlo would uh, appreciate that. I don't know how I talked them into it, Carlo, but they're doing it for free. Well, thank you very much because the cherries down there need to be addressed and yep. a lot of other ones too. So. They're beautiful right now though. You oh, absolutely. Check them out. But they, a lot yeah. of, I've seen it, a lot of dead limbs though still sometimes. I have. Uh, oh, go ahead, Brady. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. If you're not done yet, finish your list. <laughs> I just have two more things. Uh, beach season is approaching us. Uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be working on spreading new sand out on the beach, uh, backfilling the washed out parts of the beach that usually happen every uh, big rainstorm. And that's it. Cool. Thank you. Um, my last question was just around spraying for mosquitoes. I think we chatted about it briefly at a previous meeting, but um, I know that just last summer was brutal for mosquitoes. I'm sure it was everywhere. Um, just curious what we do about that. Our boss is a mosquito a savant, our village manager. So, so he could tell. Um, so Brittany, two individuals in the village that have a, a, a license to spray mosquitoes. Uh, we have a, a police officer and myself. Um, we typically send the police officer on his off time to go take care of um, certain areas like Otter Creek area. We also um, treat every catch basin with a uh, 180 day brick, which is basically a, a, um, a small little block, looks like a piece of chocolate. Um, and we drop it into a catch basin so that the larvae, uh, that the mosquitoes can't can hatch and become larvae. Um, we have not had a program for down at the park or any parks. Uh, we typically would try to spray with a um, cedar oil type of product right around the carnival time because we get the fire department, they complain a lot. So we would do some of that, um, but we've never really talked about doing that because we're more focused on the areas, you know, of course, like our wetlands and also our catch basins, which are the biggest breeders. So if we wanted to talk about that, we could easily talk about that. Our program starts sometime around the middle to the end of May, which is only a couple of weeks away. Um, but uh, we, do, we do not have, because we lost it in the flood, the vehicle and the mosquito sprayer. Actually, Jeff, do you know if James replaced the, did we get that mosquito sprayer in? Do you know? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, I believe so we, we got the new sprayer in. Okay, so we do have our mosquito sprayer back. So what we could do is use, and we're only gonna use an organic product. Uh, we'll use uh, an organic product to do some occasional spraying down at the park, but, uh, to do it on a weekly basis um, gets to be a little labor intensive. So what areas are you talking about specifically, Brittany? Um, I, well, my, so my kids go to daycare across the street from Jefferson Avenue Park. So I will just say, because that gets it to be completely in the shade, like in the evening, it's just mosquito city. Um, and I'm, I'm particularly prone, I think, to getting bit, so I'm more sensitive to it, but I like can't go anywhere without full on deep bug spray. Um, so yeah, I would say like uh, enclosed playgrounds that are in the shade, like like have extended time in the shade. I'm sure there are parks that like are more, like Harbor Island has less shade than a lot of the other parks. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I mean, and we can push this to next meeting as well, although I don't know if it is as effective. I wouldn't expect it to be weekly, but maybe bi-weekly or um, so whatever is affordable to do and safe for the kids and everything. But I think it would just, I think last summer was particularly brutal. So I don't know if that's but, the norm or not, but. Because it was a wet summer. Last summer was the first summer, I think three or four years, actually aerial spray at, at four o'clock in the morning. Um, we only have a permit, however, issued by the state to do certain areas, which is the Shore Acres area, as well as uh, um, Harbor Island Park, we actually have to get a permit to do our catch basins, mm. which doesn't seem logical, but they require us to get a permit. So to expand that permit um, to do air other areas of the village may be, a little, uh, may be a little difficult, but what we can do in the height of the season, and um, we'll, even, we'll even count mosquito landings, um, which, uh, which I've done in the past, is we can keep monitoring some areas, especially parks where kids are gonna congregate and use our, uh, our cedar oil, which is an organic product. You're not gonna get the, the most effective out of that, but at least it's something. Um, so we can, we can take a look at that. And I think the best reporters would be the, uh, the early, the early uh, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff on staff to tell us whether mosquitoes are particularly active one week or another. 
and then uh, and then address it. So we could do something like that. I just have to let the state know that we'd be uh, we'd be involved in that. Is there any way it, it may not be feasible to put um, because we don't there is electricity in that park, correct? Yeah. Sometimes you know using fans really makes a difference. No, it's true. They 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 use it on golf courses for different reasons, but you're right. I mean, Putting on like golf course. I wonder if that would if that would be a solution we could use. They do have outdoor weatherproof vans that uh, fans that could be uh, uh, an option. I'm sure no one will object to the breeze, you know. And they hang them actually, Nora, in trees or on poles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that might be a good solution. Yeah. That's a good idea. If they don't have electric, we have an electrician. We can run electric to it. How about birdhouses? Yeah, birdhouses or, you know, those kinds of things. Bats are supposed to eat mosquitoes, but I don't know how many they bats eat. eat. Oh. Bats eat mosquitoes. And the fans are good for mosquitoes. However, um, I've seen a shift in the type of mosquitoes that we get to the tiger mosquitoes, yeah. which are exceptionally vicious and yep. they are not out just dusk and dawn. Like when we were all growing up, you know, it was dusk and dawn. That's when you had to worry about the mosquitoes. They're out like all day I know. and but they look, are look, just awful. I mean, look at, look at where we live, you know, for us to, 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 to not, to not have mosquito, uh, um, uh, a mosquito situation would be very rare because in every neighborhood, there's some kind of a wetlands or a river or a marshy area, almost every area. That's true. I just think it got a lot worse once tiger mosquitoes came into the picture. Mint plant helps repel mosquitoes too. Maybe we could plant some mint in the parks. <laughs> yeah, anything we can do would be greatly appreciated, but just curious if there was anything in place for this summer. Um, but yeah, we can we can chat about it more in June and, and keep an eye on things. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything that's quick or can I make a motion to close the meeting? You're the chair. <laughs> well, I don't shut anybody out. So does anybody else have anything that they would like to ask or bring up? Yeah, I got one motion. Thing, you know, Go ahead. Just got it in there. So yeah, I definitely want to put that code uh, back on the agenda for June. Um, just yes, no, that, definitely. Yeah, that, that's pretty important. I know we don't meet in July and August, right? And so you know, it's going to be June that we're going to actually talk a little bit about that. But great, okay, awesome, thank you. It will be on. I think last year we met in August after you were done with camp. Like it was a weird time. If we if if we feel like we need to, maybe we could or no. Yeah, if you feel like we need to, we could do. Sure. We could do that. Nobody could go anywhere last year, too. That was the other problem. Yeah. Well, I, I was on Zoom from the beach, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna make a motion to close the meeting. I'll second. Thank you, everybody. Our next meeting is gonna be on Zoom again. Um, the order is extended until June 8th. So we made it in time for the next meeting to be on Zoom, yep. uh, June 1st. So have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Thanks, good night, everyone. everyone. Good night. Everyone stay well.